Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom and I'm editing a street photo and I'm going to use Lightroom in combination with a couple of Topaz apps, namely Denoise AI and Sharpen AI, which are frankly two of my favorites, uh, or I should say my two favorite apps from Topaz. They're both really good at what they do, which is of course Denoise and Sharpen Photos respectively. Now in this video, I've got a photo that's pretty dark and so I kind of go in, I do some edits and then I'm like, you know, I kind of need to denoise that thing. So I prefer personally uh, when it's a noisy raw file to do that denoising first in Topaz. And so even though I'm going to edit it, I'm going to go back and denoise the raw file and then sync them. It all works really well how all this stuff kind of comes together. Or sometimes you might be editing a photo and then realize a little bit later, gosh, I really need to remove the noise. I should have done that with the raw file, but I've already got an edit. Anyway, there's an easy way to do all that. Let me get into it. I've got this photo here. And as you can see, it's dark. I, uh, I, I typically expose to the left. And in this case, like I'm running around in a city at night, handheld, so ISO 1000, which you can see over here. So there's a little bit of noise. It's not like crazy over the top, but I don't really see the noise because you get into the file and you're like, it just looks dark, Jim. Hey, brighten the uh, photo next time. Uh, so what I wanna do is kinda come in here and I brighten the photo and I'm like, okay, hey, I light my shot. It looks pretty good, but now I'm seeing a little bit of noise. So I'm gonna need to take care of that, but hey, I wanna kinda do some edits and or maybe, maybe you don't notice the noise because you're not zooming in and you're like, hey, I'm gonna go do some edits. And so I'm gonna start over here with some masking. I'm gonna select the sky, which these masks work really great, as you know. So there it is. And what I wanna do with the sky is maybe make it a little bit bluer, a little bit darker, nothing major, just kinda of pull that down a little bit, maybe something about like that. So I'm liking that so far, but I'm gonna get another mask and this time I'm gonna get a linear gradient. What I wanna do is basically apply that kind of in this section here, and I like to make that gradient zone, that transition zone kinda of wide. And so over here, I'm gonna probably and you know, some of this is kind of, I'm just winging it for lack of a better word. I'm gonna maybe give it a little bit of an exposure bump. So I wanna lighten that foreground a little bit. And hey, I'm really seeing the noise now, um, but uh, I'm not done. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. This is all man-made concrete stuff. So for me, that's the screams, hey Jim, drag the texture slider and the clarity sliders to the right. And you can see what you get there. I mean, I think it looks pretty cool, but the noise is definitely getting more pronounced. That's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna sort it out, but I'm not done with the masking, so I'm gonna go ahead and get another mask. This time I'm gonna get a radial gradient, and what I wanna do here is just kinda drag that um, across this lower center section, which for me is, you know, fairly quite obviously the focal point of the photo. And here I just wanna do a little bit of an exposure bump. Um, I just like to brighten that center a little bit. It's kind of like an inner light on the vignette tool. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. It gives a little bit of crispness. I don't wanna overdo it. I just wanna give it a little bit better look. And I'm gonna get one more mask while I'm at it. And this is also gonna be a radial gradient. Gradient. This one is gonna be something about like that. Let's see, uh, maybe like that, maybe a little bit lower. Not an exact inversion of the other one, uh, but this is gonna be an inversion. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert that. And so now my mask is in the outside instead of the inside. So what I wanna do here is just basically uh, reduce the um, exposure a little bit. I'm actually gonna remove a little bit of texture and remove a little bit of clarity. Just kind of softens that area up because I don't really care so much about that being crisp. And I realize my linear gradient uh, and this are gonna overlap a little bit, but uh, you know, hey, this is a demonstration and I'm actually gonna lower that. They don't overlap quite as much now. But anyway, you get the point. I'm kind of done with masking. I like what I've got, but when I zoom in on my photo, you know, there's lots of noise. Uh, you can see that on the backs of these people walking, on those people, you can see it on the sign, all that kind of stuff. And in reality, it's just not that crisp, it's not that sharp, and it's definitely noisy. So this is where I want to fix it. And what I want to do is take advantage of the powerful raw model in Denoise AI, but hey, I've already got an edit. I don't want to make a copy and do all that stuff. Well, on a Mac at least, I don't know about on Windows, so I apologize. I just don't know things about the PC and how it works. But on a Mac, you can just take this file. It is a raw file. You can see that up there. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it onto Denoise AI and open that app up. And as you can see, it actually opens up the raw file. So I've actually, even though I've edited that raw file already, I'm not taking the edited version. I'm just dragging the original raw file over here to Topaz Denoise AI and let it do, uh, you know, letting it do its thing. Now, uh, I might want to adjust some of these uh, settings here. I don't know how much uh, I want to do. And the truth is, the photo's kind of dark, so it's kind of hard to tell. 
but um, I'm going to go up here in the sky and let that recalculate, and you'll be able to see how much noise has come out of the sky. I think that part is bright enough to be able to see. Okay, and there you go. If you look at the sky on the left-hand side, you can see it's a bit grainier, and on the right-hand side, it looks a bit smoother. It's going to be very hard to tell down here, but trust me, Denoise AI, it does a great job as always. And so I know I'm going to be happy with this, even though it's recalculated and I can't quite see. I can definitely see that it's definitely a bit less noisy. It's hard to tell because it's dark, but that's okay. But um, let's say I'm happy. I'm going to hit save. Now, I want to save in the image format DNG, so that's also a raw file format. And I want to click, make sure I'm on source here, which says the output image will be saved in the same directory as your original. So it's going to put this edited raw file, still in raw format, edited with Topaz Denoise only, not my Lightroom edits. It's going to drop this with the Denoise into that same folder right next to the original that I've already edited in Lightroom. So I'm going to let that calculate, and then we'll pop back into Lightroom and get this thing wrapped up. Okay, I am back in Lightroom, and here's my original raw photo, unedited from Denoise, but with my Lightroom edits. But where is my Denoise photo? Well, what you do is uh, click on the folder that you sent it back to, which contains the original. And if you right click on that, you will see synchronize folder. I'm going to click that and it says, hey, do you want to import one new photo? Why, yes, I do. Lightroom, I certainly do. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm just going to re-click on this folder. And you can see that I've got two photos. I've got this one, which is my copy with Denoise AI. It's a raw DNG format. And I've got this one, which is my original that has the Lightroom edits, but not the Denoise edits. So it's pretty easy just to sync the edits between the two. I've highlighted my original Lightroom edit. I'm going to shift and click on the Denoise AI edit, and then I'm going to click Sync Settings. And it comes up with all these different things, and I just want to make sure I get all the masks because I used a lot of masking here. And I've got all my basic stuff. I think everything else is fine. Just make sure you check which settings you want to carry over, which ones you use, I should say, and therefore want to carry over. I'm going to go ahead and hit Synchronize, and it just drops all those edits from my original Lightroom Edit RAW file without Denoise onto my Denoise RAW file that didn't have the Lightroom edits. Now it has them. So as you can see, these two are essentially the same photo, just one has Denoise and one does not. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Denoise, go into the Develop module, and take a look at it. And so now when I zoom in, you can see that a lot of that noise has been removed and reduced. It's a lot cleaner. I think the sky, that looks really nice. The only thing is be careful uh, how much noise reduction you use because I've really softened up the concrete here, which is fine. It was a really dark photo. It was hard to see. That's why I say to be careful with it because the settings are really powerful in Denoise AI. They take out noise really well. You just want to be careful. The point is, it's all come out, and so I think it looks a whole lot better than it did. If you compare it here to the Lightroom edit, you can see all the noise there versus this one. Not noise everywhere. In fact, it looks a whole lot better. Probably a little too smooth on the concrete. That's okay. But if you, again, here's the Denoise AI one, and there's the Lightroom one. You can just see so much noise. And so I'm going to go back to this one. And now what I want to do is actually add a little bit of sharpening. And I'm going to pop over to Sharpen AI for that. So while I'm here in the photo, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to click Edit In. And I'm going to go down to Topaz Sharpen AI. I've got all these settings. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So I'm taking this Denoise AI with the Lightroom adjustments as a TIFF with Pro Photo RGB over to Sharpen AI. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit, open that in Sharpen AI, and we'll crisp it up just a little bit. Okay, and so this automatically chose this out of focus, very blurry mode. I didn't make any adjustments to it, but if you take a look, like the back of this person's sweatshirt, much crisper. And if you look back here, like the sign, and let me move around a little bit. Let me get up here to this sign as well. And I'll get that street sign too. Okay, so here we go. It takes a moment to recalculate, but I've got a little bit crisper sign as well. I think all of this is looking good. I'm quite happy with what Sharpen AI has done in my photo. To be clear, I recommend experimenting with the different models and the different settings and that sort of thing. This is mostly demo purposes, but I'm happy with what I've got out of Sharpen AI. So now I want to send it back to Lightroom. This time, keep in mind, I'm using Sharpen AI as a plugin. With Denoise AI, I used it as like a drag out uh, 
probably not the right term for it, but I dragged the raw file out of Lightroom. And so I had to basically import it or synchronize it when I came back uh, with the uh, Denoise AI edited photo, but with Sharpen, I'm using it as a plugin. So I'm gonna hit apply it'll automatically drop it back into the same folder that it came from in Lightroom. And I won't have to do that step this time because it's a plugin workflow, which is different than what I did with Denoise AI. Okay, and it drops back into Lightroom, like I said, right next to the other photos. So here it is. This is, as you can see, the file name down here. It's my Denoise AI Raw Edit. And here we go. This is the Denoise AI Raw, the DNG file and that's without Sharpen AI. And then here's my original in Lightroom with just the Lightroom edits. So let me go back to this one. This would be my final version of the photo. I think it's nice and crisp, all this text and things like that. These people look nice and crisp. I did a little bit too much on the noise reduction, so just be careful because the sidewalk's a little bit soft, but is able to pick up some nice sharpening on like that logo on that person's jacket and that sort of thing. So overall, I'm pleased with how this works, but mostly what I wanted to do is share some ideas and workflow tips and suggestions about how you can use these powerful tools together. Lots of great stuff you can do in Lightroom with the masking and of course, Denoise AI is amazing for noise reduction and Sharpen AI is fantastic for sharpening photos. Put all that together and you can make these street scenes and these street photographs really have an impact even if you start out with something really dark, like in my case, or noisy or a little bit soft. Fixes it all with all these products. That's how I went through this one. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I will be back soon with another video. And until then, adios.